So let's sort of dive in and talk about how to do this. So the first thing that we need to talk about is folder structure. So if you're at all familiar with WordPress, then you'll this will look familiar to you. But in WordPress, you have these sort of files in the root folder wherever you install WordPress. And then you have this WP content folder. This is where our plugins are going to go. And in here, you're going to have a plugins and a themes and upgrade and uploads. You may have others depending on what plugins you have installed. But we want the plugins folder. And this is where we're going to put our plugin. So the first thing that we need to new, do is create a new folder. So we're going to call this uh, folder, we'll just call this John Morris Forms. Keep it pretty simple. And then we're going to put all of our files in here. Now, the very first file that you need is you need one that matches the folder name. So we're going to do John Morris forms.php. So that's how WordPress knows, you know, it has all this stuff it does to be able to read the folders or files that are in this plugins folder. And when it sees a folder, the way it knows what the main plugin file is, is these two things have the same name. Okay, so this John Morris forms.php is going to be our main plugin file. This is the file that WordPress is going to look at first. This is where we're going to include any other files that we use into it, all that sort of thing. So that this is a, a, a pretty important file. The next thing I'm going to do is just sort of give you some basic structure. We're not actually going to use all of this structure throughout the, the course. We're not going to use every single one of these folders, but it'll give you sort of a baseline that you can work from. And this is, uh, I would say this is the, the generally recommended folder structure. As you get into more complex plugins and so forth, this is probably going to, you may have to change this. This may not be adequate, but sort of to start out this is what's recommended so the first folder we're going to create is one called admin and this is where we're going to put all of our admin stuff we'll, we'll talk about that in a second we'll create another one called includes and we'll create another one called public so the idea here is we're all of our anything related to stuff we're going to do in the back end of WordPress is going to be put in our admin folder. Anything in terms of CSS and JavaScript and images that we're going to be using on the front end is going to be put in this public folder. And then it's a little bit sort of different, but our main actual any sort of classes that we're going to include or we're going to create a class and we're going to use that. Uh, in the front end, or it's, maybe it's a common class, that's all going to go inside of includes here. And we have we have some examples of this as we go through this, so you'll, you'll get to see this. So beyond that, then in our admin folder, we're going to create some subfolders. So the first one we're going to create is called CSS. The next one is images. And the next one is for, as you might guess, JavaScript. Okay, now it so happens that in this plugin, we're not actually going to use any of these. But you do want to separate, just to keep your head sort of straight, you want to separate where you store your CSS files and JavaScript files and images files for stuff you're going to use in the admin from stuff you're going to use on the front end. So. As you might guess, our public folder is actually going to have the exact same folder structure. So we're going to create CSS, images, and we will create JS. So you put those, uh, those appropriate files in, in each one of these, depending on whether you're going to use in the admin or you're going to use it in the, in the public here. All right, so that's our our basic structure. The last thing that we're going to do here, and you know, this is just something that sort of, I know this, I did some research before I wrote this plugin, but I wanted to find one of the things when you, when you're building forms is you have all of the input fields and you can hand code them all, but a lot of times that can lead to inconsistencies across fields and so forth. And it's just a lot of extra coding. And there happens to be uh, PHP classes out there that'll do this for you. So I found one. 
I'm not saying this is the one you absolutely have to use. I'm not saying this is the best one. This is just the one that the way it worked, I sort of liked. So I have the link in the, the file, but if we come over here, the, the, the file download that you're going to get has this link in it, but this is a pretty straightforward, uh, uh, PHP class that we can use here. Okay. And the, I just sort of like the way it works with, you know, add the way you add inputs, the way that you set attributes and so forth. And it, you know, it's a little older, but it was really stable and worked well. So I, I, I like this. So the thing to do is we need this file right here. And so what I normally do is I just take this and I'll just select all this and copy it and we can come back over here. And this is going to go in our includes here. Okay. So this is a, a sort of a class that we're going to be pulling into our main plugin to use. So that, that would sort of fit under this idea of includes. And so I'm going to create a new file. I could just download the file, but I just, uh, for, for naming sake, and it's just a little bit easier for me to do it this way. So builder.php, that's what we're going to call this file. And we'll open this. And I'll just paste in that code. Now, one of the things you have to be careful of is this down here. So I just remove this extra code and we look good to go here. And then the thing you'll notice, he doesn't have the URL in here. I'm going to grab this URL just for you. And I'm going to dump that in here so that you can find all the documentation for this. All right, so this is our main uh, plugin sort of form field class that we're going to use. This is going to help us generate the form fields. Again, I would recommend if you want to really get into to tweaking this to come through and read through the doc documentation. But you can see here, essentially what you do is you first instantiate a new instance of this PHP form builder class. And then you can come down here and you can set the attributes for the form itself. So the action, the URL, the method, the enclosure type, what sort of markup you want to use, class ID, et cetera, all these different ones that you can use down here. And then when you want to use uh, add inputs to the form, you use add input and you can set some options and you have all of these different options you can set for every input. It supports text fields, text areas, select box, checkbox, radio buttons, et cetera. And then once your form is all, you've added all your inputs, you just call build form and it'll actually generate the output. So that's what we're going to do here uh, as we, as we build our form, but that's our, our main sort of class here. We don't really need this anymore. We're just going to, we're going to call it and use it. So we don't really need to, to look at it anymore. All right. So that's sort of our basic starting structure. We have our folder structure. We have our main plug plugin file built. We have our uh, big, our main class for building the fields that we need included. The last thing that we need to do sort of for initial setup is we need to do the plugin header. So WordPress, WordPress requires that you use a certain sort of plugin header. Now there's a lot to this. I, I already have one here. You can also come over and just go WordPress plugin header and you will see right here header requirements and it'll give you if you expand this it'll give you you can just copy and paste this okay and then you can change these according to what you need so no need to remember all this sort of thing but i already have one so <laughs> that i have for this so i'm just going to use that instead of retyping it all okay so of course we start off with opening php tags and then we have our uh, our plugin header here. So the plugin name sort of self-explanatory. What's the name of the plugin, the URL of the plugin. So if you were uploading on the WordPress repository, you might use the plugin that you get when you do that. Or if you are selling it on your own site, you might link to the sales page for it, or maybe the support page, etc. wherever you want to the home of the actual plugin to be. Now I'm not selling this or whatever. I may, once I sort of release this course, I may post change this link to that. Uh, the, the sort of sales page for the course, but again, just whatever you want the, that, that to be a description of it. Uh, as you can see here, this is an example plugin, 
Uh, I'll sort of emphasize this is meant purely as a training aid, not for use in production environments, although I know a lot of people will try to do that. So I did try to write this to where it could just be used. Uh, the versioning, the version number, I have the date here when I, I started working on this. You could have a, a sort of a versioning system that you want to use, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, and then you get to 1.1, 1.2, all that sort of thing. However you want to version it out here. Author name, if that's your name, the author URL, uh, the GPL licensing. This is pretty much, I would say at this point, required for WordPress plugins. I mean, I'm not the licensee expert here, but I, I pretty much just always use this here. I, I don't know that there's really any way around that. Text domain is going to be for when we get into localization. We're not really going to cover that too heavy uh, in here. We have some spots where we're going to to set it up to do that. But um, and, and you always want to do that when you're building with your plugins. But we're not actually going to create uh, um, a localization file here. And then domain path is basically where your language files are going to be stored. So these two things sort of go together. So this essentially lets WordPress know that when we do the localization, that the 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 text that's being output is being output by this plugin, and then if there's it knows to look in this file for any sort of language files um, and it has its whole system for doing that so that's what these two lines are so but that's your that's your stored sort of standard plugin header so this kind of gives you a basic shell of your wordpress plugin and and now we can sort of start building from here so the first thing that that we want to do